Greetings, Alan Merritt's Dark Crusaders, and welcome to Codex Compliant. I've got a question for you. When is a codex not a codex? When it's an interactive army list, obviously. These days, if you want to play a game of Warhammer 40,000, it's pretty simple to build an army list for the game. Just boot up your app of choice and you'll have a functional army ready to go in minutes. But it wasn't always so simple, and a pen and a calculator were often involved. And whilst there is nothing stopping you from doing it that way now, and some people still do, we have the data to prove it, it's still much less common nowadays and it is a bit of a pain in the ass. But, if you were making a list in, say, 2003 to play a game of 3rd edition Warhammer 40k, pen and paper was really the only option. Or was it? In October 2003, the new releases section of White Dwarf 286 contained two interactive army lists for use on a Windows PC, the Armies of the Imperium and the Enemies of the Imperium. These were software that allowed you to build army lists for almost every faction in the game, and each cost £15 or your regional equivalent. They were made as an expanded version of a smaller scale release circa early 2001 called Space Marines, a Warhammer 40,000 interactive army list. Just rolls off the tongue. Which, you will be unsurprised to learn, allowed you to make army lists for loyalist Space Marine chapters. Although the other factions were later available as free downloads. It even got an article in White Dwarf 254. This interactive army list sold far better than expected, and so, on October the 19th, 2001, it was announced that they were starting development on a new version which grew into the two releases that we're talking about today. Originally, it was intended to be released in August 2003, but ended up coming out just a couple of months later. Although if you weren't paying attention to this stuff at the time, have fun figuring out any of that today! The only real clue we initially had that there was even a version before Armies and Enemies was a line from their now defunct website's FAQ that mentioned that the software didn't work with the 1.0 version of the lists. But since neither of us had heard about this until somebody tweeted the White Dwarf ad at us and obscure GW stuff is kind of our wheelhouse, we uh, kind of had to get them, didn't we? But don't worry, they cost significantly less than £15 each nowadays. One of the first things you might notice is that the boxes label them as Codex Armies of the Imperium and Codex Enemies of the Imperium. Which is strange, since traditionally Codexes are books, and as you can probably tell, these are not books. Although, given that they contain army lists, they still probably deserve to be called Codexes more than Cityfy did, but that is a whole other video for a whole other time. Fittingly, the boxes use the same stylings as the late 3rd edition codices, and inside you got some basic instructions as well as the CD-ROMs containing the software itself. However, despite the simple instructions, getting these installed and working on a modern machine was… not so simple. The latest supported operating system was Windows XP, so we knew it might be a bit of a bugger to get working. After some fiddling, we found out that it was either entirely incompatible with Windows 10, or just something in our setup was preventing it from working, and it wouldn't even start no matter what we tried. And since there's not exactly many, or indeed any, people online talking about how to get it running these days, we were on our own. Fortunately, we still had a copy of Windows 98 lying around. See Mum, it's not hoarding if it's useful. So we installed that onto a virtual machine and tried to install the software on that since it's both a supported operating system and one that a lot of people were still using in 2003, so it seemed like a safe bet. Let's just wait for it to boot up and uh... Oh Jesus! Sadly, as nostalgic as all this was, it didn't work and it wouldn't boot up there either. Wondering if we'd done something wrong with the virtual machine setup or if the software was just fundamentally broken, we dug out a Windows XP disk and tried that on the virtual machine instead. Again, not hoarding. And, after a little bit of finagling, it all worked. So we can finally start talking about the actual software this video is supposed to be about. So, whichever one you boot up, the first thing that greets you is a bit of art and a quote. And since the images are stored as simple JPEGs and the text is an easily editable file, we did try to change it to this image of Star Trek the Animated Series Kirk firing magic out of his hands, but when it didn't work straight away we realised that that was a silly thing to do anyway, and I'm not sure why we're wasting your time with it now. Would have been pretty cool though. Anyway, while Armies of the Imperium and Enemies of the Imperium are two distinct programs, they are functionally identical outside of which armies are featured and the skin of the UI. 
armies is grey, enemies is red. They're even installed in the same location, so everything we say from here on out applies to both of them, and we won't really be making much of a distinction between the two because, well, there isn't really a distinction to be made. The programs themselves are pretty simple to use once you understand how they work, but it does take a moment to get your head around it. When you create a new list, you can pick what army you're using, how big it's going to be, what mission type it'll be used for, etc. Once you've done that, you're met with this screen, and I'd just like to take a moment to ask you how you think you'd add a tactical squad. Oh wait. So, you think you'd double click on the troops thing over there to bring up your options? Nope, that doesn't do anything. Maybe click on the troops bit of the force organizational chart? Nope, not that either. What you actually do is drag and drop the troops icon on the left over to the chart, and when you do, it'll bring up a new window with all of the troops options. As I said, it's simple, but it just wouldn't be the first thing you'd try, you know? I mean, it's like they want you to read the instructions or something. However, once you've done that, you start to understand the logic it's using, and it's all pretty self-explanatory. It is, after all, mostly just dragging and dropping. Want more marines? Drag one over and select the number you want. Want different war gear? Select the marine in question and drag some over to him and select whatever existing war gear, if any, it'll replace. And that's really about it. Usefully, you could also get pop-ups containing information about everything from weapons and war gear to a general overview of the army. But with all that said, let's actually use this software to make a couple of lists. First off, let's take one of the example forces from an era-appropriate book and see how big it would be. For simplicity, let's do Alan Merritt's Dark Crusader Force from the 3rd edition Space Marine Codex. So that's a Commander, a Librarian, Terminators, two Tactical Squads, a Landspeeder, and a Whirlwind. Which, if we got all their war gear correct, would be 925 points. For those interested, that army would cost, at the time of writing, 990 points in 9th edition. Okay, let's do another. So the 3rd edition Necron Codex example force would be 945 points, and ooh, let's do Jonas Eckerstam's army from the 3rd edition Eldar Codex, which would have been 1,207 points. Although with that last one we really had to guess at war gear and things like psychic powers since those had to be bought and they aren't exactly represented on the models. But you know, it's vaguely in the right ballpark. Probably. This was a bad example to pick. So, having used these programs to figure all that stuff out, yeah, these programs just kind of work. Even if they are a little less user-friendly than their modern equivalents, like those, they do make quickly swapping out different units from a list much simpler than the pen and paper method. Plus, sometimes it's just fun to make a list you'll never use and see, say, how many grots you can legally fit into a single standard force organization chart, or just making an army that you'd never be able to afford to put the time or money into, but, you know, you can still dream. I do that a lot on Battlescribe, you know, make fantasy army lists. Uh, does everyone else do that? Is that normal? Please tell me everyone else does that. Some of the other little things the programs could do was keep records of your given forces battles. And they had a pretty in-depth help feature that contained a lot of info, not just for using the program, but on what a lot of the game concepts actually meant. Which is neat! But if these lists were just in a computer, they're a little limited in use unless your PC happens to be in the room that you're playing the game in. Fortunately, the software allowed you to print out your lists or export them as various kinds of files, so you could, I don't know, plop them on a floppy disk and print them off on your work or school's printer because printer ink is and shall always and forever be upsettingly expensive. Although the files we've exported don't look well, I won't lie. Even the spreadsheet one, which you'd think would be the one least prone to formatting issues, is a bit of a mess. I mean, terminato. We're going to assume they probably didn't do this when they were new, and this is some kind of artifact, a virtual machine, or something else in our setup, because, yeah, this kind of undermines a pretty useful feature here. Now, earlier we said that these discs contained almost every faction in the game, because they are missing a few. Basically, everything from Codex Eye of Terror isn't on the discs, despite the software coming out during the Eye of Terror campaign. Although, they do contain the lists from Codex Armageddon, despite them not being listed on the boxes. One of the more surprising things we learned looking into this software was that Games Workshop supported it for several years, with its official website remaining online till at least 2009. 
We kind of initially assumed that since it came out in 2003, they probably quietly retired it when 4th edition came out a year later and the subsequent 4th edition codex has made it obsolete, but no, they did occasionally put out patches to do things like add newer codexes, fix any oversights in the list, and add things like the 40k and 40 minutes game type. This meant that the Eye of Terror armies that were initially missing were eventually added. Some of these patches can even still be downloaded if you're willing to dig around the Wayback Machine a little, although sadly we were unable to locate the very latest updates, so those may be lost to time. Outside of that archive stuff, all that's really left online of these programs is just a few scattered references and the odd forum thread discussing it. I suppose in a lot of ways, this kind of thing was ahead of its time. Although it should be noted that GW were not the only ones to make software like this around the turn of the millennium. Lone Wolf Software also released Army Builder, but this kind of software feels like it really needed to have the advent of a portable computer that you can take around with you so you can make lists without having to print them off to really come into its own. You know, make it usable on some some kind of ubiquitous device that, that maybe, it's, maybe it's small enough to fit inside your own pocket. If only such a device were to exist. Still, it's been interesting to rummage around in GW's early foray into this kind of thing. It looks pretty basic, and it certainly isn't very flashy, but it does exactly what it says on the tin. And whilst it might not be much use in the modern day, and even getting it running nowadays is a bit of a pain, and the exported versions of the list seem to be a bit broken, it's still fascinating if for nothing else than its relative obscurity. So maybe check these out if you want a third edition list, can't really be bothered to write anything down, and maybe happen to have a Windows XP machine lying around. A scenario that is both incredibly common and we all must prepare for. Howdy there! Thank you very much for watching to the end of this video that was like 50% just us talking over footage of a program that's as exciting to look at as Microsoft Excel. We really appreciate it. You all know the drill by now. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving us a like or a comment as it helps us out with the old algorithm. And if you'd like to support what we do, there's always patreon.com slash snipeandwib, where contributors get early access to videos, their names in the end credits, and a handful of exclusive content. We also have t-shirts and mugs for sale, link is in the description. Oh, also, we hit 40k subs recently, uh, so thank you everybody for that. Uh, there's a special video celebrating it in the oven. It will be out soon. But until then, goodbye.